Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you so much for bringing us here today for this conference, for the worship, and for the teaching. We thank you, Lord, that you desire that we do take time to rest in you and to worship and to just focus on who you want us to be and how you want to make us to be servants, Lord. So we thank you. And I pray that you would just inspire us and enlighten us. And if there would be um, just anything inside uh, of our hearts, Lord God, that you would just remove it so that we could receive from you. Just go before this time. Help us, Lord, and just um, let us just bless you and let us just focus on um, the things that you would have for us today. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So hello, ladies. Welcome. Um, if you got a, when you came, you got a question, little card. So if you have a question for women's ministry, um, raise your hand if you have it filled out. Alexandra and Ray are going to go collect them for you. Anybody that has any questions? Okay. So open your Bibles to Titus chapter 2. So we're talking about women's ministry. There's some questions here that, um, that we're going to go through at the end. But uh, we're going to look at Titus chapter 2. And, you know, ladies, how many of you right now are serving in the women's ministry? Okay, put your hands down. Thank you. How many of you, uh, how many of you attend a women's ministry? How many of you, your church doesn't have a women's ministry? Okay, all right. So, you know, there's a lot of, um, to do with women's ministry and a lot, God blesses us with a lot of opportunities to do different things. And so let's start out reading Titus chapter two. Um, the women's ministry has a purpose. What is the purpose? Titus chapter two, verse three. The old, well, the older women likewise that they may be reverent and behavior, not slanders, not given too much, too much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. So when you think about the women's ministry, it's really, really simple. If you're looking at what the word says, because the word really is everything that, that in the women's ministry that we should be exhorting, but we should be encouraging each other. And you know what's so funny is that I always, I'm sorry, the lights. I, um, what Pastor Don was sharing earlier this morning, right now, he was saying, before you know it, you know, when you're young, you want everything to happen. You want to get your license. You want to get married. You want to go to school. You want to have kids. You want all the things you want to do. And then all of a sudden, you're like old. <laughs> you turn old and you're like, oh, wow, well, how did the time go by so fast? And God is so wise. He says that the older women and um, even when we, when uh, if you're young and or your church is young, or if uh, you started out, you know, years ago, or maybe you're you're you're, you know, you're re older. It doesn't matter. The words still apply to us. But one day, you know, like me. If you're young, you'll wake up and go, wait, I am the older woman, <laughs> admonishing the younger woman. And you know what, too? There are some, um, there are a lot of older women who have many life experiences. But this scripture is applying to us in our marriages, with our children, um, just in the church as a whole. And not because uh, older women are better, but because if they're seasoned in the Lord, then they've gone through some things that maybe you haven't gone through. And even, I think that, I mean, 
it says the older women because you know what? I, I love that the Lord used that word. <laughs> you know, he could have said the women, but he said the older women. And um, when you look at that verse, it says, the older women likewise that they be reverent in their behavior. Okay, so when you go down that list of things that it says, the characteristics, there's a bunch of commas, right? See all those commas? There's tons of them. Because it's like a list of things, okay? The very first things that they be reverent in their behavior. Gosh, I don't think any, I don't ever use that word reverent, do you? <laughs> but what does it mean? It means that, that you have um, an outlook, a vision about life that is holy, that is towards godliness, okay? That your behavior, um, does that mean you can't have fun? No. Does that mean that you don't goof around, especially girls and women when they're alone, when they're by themselves? We kind of get crazy, right? Like if I said, okay, you guys, before we start, we're going to play a game. Some of them would go, yes, you know, I love doing stuff like that, you know, and when, and, and, you know, just why do girls get together and have a bunch of their friends over to, you know, do fun things? Because you can just be silly and do stuff. It's not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm like, it's your mindset and your heart is wanting to please the Lord. Okay, so that was the first, uh, the second comma. But then the next one, number two, the, 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 I have it, my point, number two is not slanderers. You know, the women's ministry should not be known for being slanderers. You know, women, women love to talk. I don't have to tell you that. You don't need me to tell you that because you know we love to talk about anything, you know. But specifically in this chapter, they're saying not to be slanderers. That could be a lot of things involved in there. Not saying unkind things about other people. Not saying, it could put the list of their children, their husbands, their church, their family. You know, as women, we need to be above reproach, especially if you're serving in the women's ministry. Because um, there's a lot of people that come into our church and we don't know where they come from or their family or their life, but it's our responsibility to, to be godly and to lead them in righteousness. It says not giving too much wine. That's self-explanatory, okay? You, they don't, if you're in the women's ministry or you're a woman in church, you shouldn't be the one inviting everyone over to party or to drink, right? Okay. Um, teachers of good things. You know what's great about being in a church is that there's so many different kinds of women. There's the women like, oh, for example, Betty Martinez. <laughs> Anytime anybody asks me anything about a plant, I don't know, ask Betty. We're in the middle of Israel and we're looking at these, uh, walking around and we're saying, what plant is that? And I said, ask Betty and she knows. Some people have like a love for certain things. You know, uh, my daughter loves uh, to eat whole food that's organic and that is clean. And like she applies that to her, like her makeup and her kids. And so, you know, she, it's, she's conscientious about that. So if somebody wants to ask me about certain things like that, I'll say, go talk to Alexandra, you know, or, you know, anything. I don't know. You know, some people are into um, different things. Okay. Some people, some of you guys can sew. Okay. I can't. Some of you guys are craft people, but teachers of good things, good things, anything that will encourage other women. Okay, um, it says that they admonish the young women to love their husbands. That's the, the goal. K. Smith, always, every time. Uh, the other day, uh, well, last weekend, I was able to go to a pastor's wife retreat. So we didn't get to go because of COVID last year, but we went to one on the East Coast. And you know, it's really weird because um, I don't think of myself as being old <laughs> until like my friend reminds me that I'm older than her. But um, she knows who I'm talking about. 
<laughs> anyway, but you know, I don't think of being old, but then when I think back, I, I ask myself, oh my goodness, we've been here for 30 years. I'm old, but I never, or I'm always, I was always blessed to be able to go to the pastor's wife retreats in California. And um, when and Kay Smith was there, what she would always say to us every time, she was a riot, she, she's still alive, but she was hilarious, she was funny, she would say things with such passion, she would even like say things and go, oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but she was just so, she's just such a great, just a down-to-earth woman, and she would always tell us, love God, love your husbands, love your children, husband, sorry, love your children, <laughs> she meant like in a group, and love the church. And I'll never forget that because that's really, that's what she, she would exhort us to do. And in the women's ministry is to exhort women to do that very thing, to love God first, love your husband, love your children. You know, you could say your family, to, and to, uh, to love the church. And when you're loving God first, you're going to do all those other things. And you're going to surely love the church. Because the women's ministry is to encourage. Most, think about it, when you go to church, it's made up of women. There's a lot of men, but there's a lot of women. Women that come without their husbands. Women that come without, don't have husbands. Women that are young, women that are old, women that are widowed. And it is a place for women to feel safe. Um, okay, I'm gonna finish through the verse and then I'm gonna come back. That they admonish young, young women to love their husband, comma, to love their children, to be discreet be discreet, um, you know, to be, uh, to have wisdom with the things you talk about or the people you talk to, you know. You can't be friends with everybody. And even in the women's ministry, you're not going to be the, I don't know, you're not going to be like the perfect for, for everybody. Not everybody in the women's ministry is going to go, I love that teacher. You know, there might be some teachers that they don't like. I don't know. Maybe they just can't relate to them. But that's okay. There's other people who are, uh, like, in our ministry, I'm blessed to have five women who teach. And I am so blessed because they're younger than me. They have a different situation in their home. They have, you know, different, they have kids at home. They, they have babies, young kids. And then um, there's Dorothy, and she, her kids are grown up just like mine. And she's been married, you know, um, I don't even know how long Dorothy's been married. Um, but we have different people who have different personalities. And, and you know, here I was at to be discreet. But women who know how to carry themselves and how to talk and how to act. It says to be chaste, of course. We need to be chaste. We need to be, to be godly, to be holy, to be homemakers. It says good obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. On my notebook, I made a big, huge arrow saying the, what, the whys for why we need to be all these things is so that the word of God may not be blasphemed. We are women who are to represent Christ. In the women's ministry, we are to represent Christ. We're to represent our church. We're to, if you're the pastor's wife, if you're the teacher, you're to represent your pastor and the leadership of your church. Do you know how many times as a woman in women's ministry, I say, I don't know, I'll ask Ray. I don't know, I'll ask the assistant pastor. I don't know, I'll, you know, I'm, a servant. I'm not in charge. I'm in charge of the women's ministry. I'm in charge of the things that I do, but I'm under them. They're the heads. You know, everything we do and plan has to go and mesh with what's happening in the church. No ministry is more important than any other ministry. In the beginning, we used to say, see the sign outside the door? Ray and I, we would just like, or I would say, it says Calvary Chapel. 
You know, it doesn't say the women's ministry. It doesn't say the men's ministry. It doesn't say Cal Canon Christian Academy. It says Calvary Chapel. This church belongs to everybody and no ministry except for the Sunday teaching and the Wednesday teaching of the Word of God. That's the premier thing that's supposed to happen in the church. And so in the women's ministry, we are supporting the other ministries. We're supporting them by encouraging the women who were there with us and the women who aren't there with us, right? Because we, as we go out into the women's ministry, into the church, we're there to encourage the women. You know, um, we're there to say, hey, we're having a Bible study. We're talking about blah, 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 blah. You guys want to come? Or we're having a tea. You know, we're to reach out. I am, without a doubt, one of the biggest proponents of the whole concept of church. Okay, I know that sounds really dumb for me to say, but let me explain. There's a lot of pair of ministries in the community of my community, your communities. But sometimes those para ministries draw people away from the church. They're great, and if you don't have anything going on, then they're great to have. But sometimes what they do is they pull people from the church away from being a part of the family of God. Because this family is the family of people who live by you. They live down the street. They live next door to you. They live in the city next, uh, uh, next door to you or whatever. And so we're here together as a family to encourage each other. Now, if you are living in whatever your city is and you want to encourage your friend or your neighbor who's going through trials or tribulations or they're getting divorced or whatever's happening, you don't want to tell them go 50 miles away to some event that is like a weekly basis, you want them to say, come with me to church. Come with me to the Bible study. Come with me to women's ministry. And guess what? Your family's here with you. And so I'm not, I'm talking about, so I'm not saying that para ministries are wrong, but I'm saying that, that there's things in this church that will meet the needs of your women. And you know, if women choose to go to other things, then that's okay. Nobody, you know, how many times in the beginning of ministry were we like frustrated? <gasps> They're not coming here. They're going to this Bible study over there. And we would say, say you know what? We're going to serve and we're going to bless the women at our church. And if people want to go to another church for their Bible study, that's fine. Because we're going to, you know what? We're going to minister to the women that God brings us, be it 5, 10, 20, 50, 100. And we're just going to minister to those women. And when they have problems, trust me, you won't have enough time for even the women that are there for their families and praying for them and encouraging them. Um, so our women's ministry, that's our goal, to encourage women. Um, let's turn to Acts 2, chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I have this huge Bible here. It's so nice. I can see. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Um, it says, so continually daily, and this is after um, the, when the Holy Spirit came upon the church, okay? And verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through. Sorry, I lost my place. Were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as men any one had needed. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. See, being in the women's ministry is going along with doing all the things that God has called the church to do. So uh, we're supposed to model all those things. We're supposed to model the, the breaking of bread, um, the, the fellowship, the praising of, of God, um, the, the sharing, and 
we, I mean, we never have that problem in our women's ministry when it comes to, okay, we're going to have a taco night. Uh, we're going to provide the meat and the tacos. You bring all the topping. And oh my goodness, we're always blessed to have tons of food. So we know how to break bread together, right? But the fellowship of women, you know, uh, once a month, on the sec the third tuesday of the month we have something called ladies night out and the other day i realized we've been doing it for like 15 years every tuesday third tuesday of the month at seven o'clock we meet sometimes there's a theme sometimes there's not last time they did i ordered sandwiches and all the ladies brought sides and i imagine there was tons of food and we sit down we eat and we just fellowship there's no agenda, there's no, we fellowship. And then after like half an hour, we have a teaching. On the ladies night out night, we have worship, we're blessed. We have someone, a young girl from the church, she's in the worship team, she does worship. It's amazing. And then we have a teaching, it's a 30 minute teaching. And you know, I don't always teach it, other people teach it. And we, we take turns and it's just a night of fellowship. You know, it's not, you know, when we do our women's Bible study, we break up into groups. We have, you know, the, the worksheets that we can go through and we get together. We, 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 um, we have food still. We don't have worship because we, we can't have, we don't have anybody that comes. We usually start, like we started January and we went all the way till, when did we stop? April, right before Easter. We went for like, 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 I don't know, February, March, April, like three months. And in between, we still do our ladies, our ladies' night out, and then uh, we do the teaching, and then we do the we break into groups. And it used to be, oh, um, it used to be we used to go through the through the paperwork line upon line, but now we don't. Um, now we we talk and we have discussion about it. And hey, what did you think about the teaching? And what did you think about this? And we just talk to each other. It's really great. And it gets kind of crazy sometimes because we're all in one room. We're like, Shh, you guys are too noisy. But it's really cool for women to come together and talk about things about God. And then we take prayer requests and then we pray and then we're done. But we do that every week, whatever book we're going, whatever we're going through. Um, last time we did uh, the character of God. And so we just went through the characters of God and his faithfulness, his loving kindness and everything. And you can do whatever you want to do, but it's a blessing to be able to do that together. We have Bible study, the Bible studies. We have a summer book club we're going to start doing in June. Uh, June? Ugh, I don't know. June. I think June. So we'll take the whole month of June and we'll decide if we're going to do it at night or in the daytime. And then we'll go and we'll go through a book. I wanted to show you some books that we've gone through before because, you know, there's nothing like making people read. <laughs> you know, we need to read. It's good for us, right? The Bible, uh, so many teachers say that leader, reader, leaders are readers. If you want to learn, if you want to grow, you got to read. You know, however you do it. Some people like to listen, but when you read about the Word of God and people and their heart towards it, you all will always be encouraged. And this is the book that whenever I pick up this book, people go, no, and I always talk about this book because it's a great book about living your life for the Lord. It's called The Calvary Road. We've read this book 10, maybe 15 times in the women's ministry. It's an amazing book. It a, it's a, just goes right to your heart about the way you live and how Jesus lived and how he calls you to live. It's an, you can get it online. It's a PDF. Um, I just brought some other books. Um, this is another book called Calm My Anxious Heart. And it's by Linda Dillo, and it has a bunch of little stories, uh, little vignettes, and um, that just can touch your heart. And and we actually went through this book, and um, is this the one? No, this isn't the one. Uh, but anyway, it's called Calm My Anxious Heart. Um, and then, of course, and any book by Kay Smith, because. I'm just, she's timeless, just the way she goes through talking practical ways to live as women. Uh, Reflecting God is a great book. And then Colossians just goes through the book of Colossians. This one actually has a 12-week Bible study workbook in it. Um, I don't think this one does, but I think you can get the, the work study. And, you know, we don't have like a... You know, we don't have anybody here that does studies and there's, doing studies are good and you could probably make up your own or you could get them from other churches. But, um, you know, really what you're doing is, uh, this is one, another thing about women's ministry is that the women's ministry, 
We're not trying to make you Bible scholars. I'm just say it, put it right out there. You're not, we're not trying to make you Bible scholars. We're trying to teach you and we're trying to have you learn and apply it to your life. But where you want to learn like some things like that is, you know, either on your own, but also with your pastor on Sundays and Wednesdays. That's their job to go through exegetically through the Bible. We, we aren't, I mean, we do share, you know, what it says in the Greek and what it says in Hebrew and, and what this word means and how you apply it, but we're encouraging you and exhorting you to do all those things that it says in Titus. It's really simple, really simple. Yes, if you have a teacher is like, you know, we have, a, one of our teachers is like, She's like amazing and like she really like says it means this and it means this and it means this and, 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 that, and we love that. But not, not every teaching is that because the word of God speaks for itself and you sharing it with other people is what God wants. We also do teas. Um, we've talked about that. We've done, we do teas. We do, uh, we do Christmas teas. We do, sm- we do, um, we do like a spring tea. Actually today, Tomorrow was the day we're supposed to normally do like our spring tea, but we're here doing this. So, um, but usually we do what, like around Mother's Day. Uh, We usually do one at the beginning of the year. COVID kind of cramped us a lot of everybody, but we do things like that. Uh, One time we did a mom mom tea, but it kind of got messed up because it was right before COVID and we're like, nobody knew what was going to happen. So we're like, we can't invite children because we didn't know if we were all going to die or not. You know, so we're like, oh, okay, we canceled that. Um, and we also have a mom's group, and I'm going to have Alexandra um, coming up here um, maybe in a little bit. She'll come up here and talk to you a little bit about our mom's group. But every time we meet for women's ministry, I'm just trying to make sure I don't go over. This is the main purpose. This is how we do and why we do what we do. If you notice, the first thing we do, obviously, is we pray. These are really simple. It seems really dumb that I'm even saying these things, but I'm telling you, there's women's ministries that don't do this, okay? You get together, you pray. And when you open your Bible in the very beginning, you say, ladies, open your Bible to whatever. I know it's really easy in women's ministry to have your iPad and to have your phone and everything like that, and that's great. But if you don't encourage your women to open their Bibles, we're going to go through Acts chapter 2. We're going to go through Titus chapter 3. That is the best modeling you can do. Where was I at the other day? We were at the pastor's wife retreat. And then one of the teachers was saying, oh, I love to hear the pages turning. Because it means that you're using your Bible. You're modeling that behavior to women. Open your Bibles. So we say we share the word. And every time we do women's ministry, we share the gospel. Do you guys, you know, that's the purpose of women's ministry. To share that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross because you're a sinner and you need to repent. And that the Holy Spirit wants you to know that you're a sinner. And when you repent, he comes into your heart and he fills you with his spirit. And you, are, you receive Christ and he makes you a new person, a new creation. Every time we meet for women's ministry, I'm always telling the ladies, you got to say Jesus and you got to share the gospel. It's so easy. I'm telling you when you're teaching to say God and the Lord and you're doing it and you're sharing and you're reading and you're studying Psalm 19 and then you don't say Jesus' name. You got to, the power is in the name of Jesus. And you got to talk about the cross and you got to talk about the blood and you got to talk about sins every time you meet with women's ministry. Women's ministry... um, is to share the gospel, share the word, share Jesus. You're, the word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to pierce down to the soul and to the marrow. I could tell you the most amazing stories in the world, but if I don't share Jesus, the word of God with you, I'm a failure. You know, I, you have to share the word. You have to have a plan to share the word in anything, at a tea, um, at a fashion show, at a, we've never done a fashion show, but, uh, or, or whatever you're doing, you have to say, ladies, open your Bible to chapter whatever. 
Um, there, it's great opportunities for fellowship. It doesn't always have to be like we're all sitting so nice and good. You know, it's opportunities. Uh, one time before our Bible study, I said, okay, uh, oof, raise your hand if blah, 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 blah. And, okay, all you ladies, uh, it was a long time ago, you ladies will all raise your hand, go over there. And then all you ladies, go over there. And then all you ladies, go over there. And then they all got into a group. And then I said, okay, find out one thing about one person. So they all were finding out something. And I said, okay, I'm going to call on you. Okay, this group, um, Betty, you tell me about Kathy. And she's got to tell me something about Kathy. So everybody has to be listening. Everybody has to be paying attention. We want to encourage women to fellowship, to, to, to know each other. We also want to be aware in women's ministry that when there's people that are sitting by themselves, we want to introduce women to each other. We want to include everybody. One time at women's ministry, there was a girl, and she was sitting by herself. And she was a young girl. And I saw her, and I said, hey, you need to go sit with the 30-somethings. <laughs> oh, they're 20-somethings. Sorry, they're not the 30-somethings. So I said, come on, come on over. And I made her go over there and sit with all those young girls. Because, you know, they all have the same, they talk about the same thing or whatever. And, um, and so we need to do that. We need to say, hey, you really like blah, blah, blah. Okay, let me go introduce you to Rona because she really likes blah, blah, blah too or whatever. So that's our job in the women's ministry to encourage each other. You know, I think sometimes, I know when I was younger, I was like, well, nobody made me the boss of anything. You know, why am I going to go and do it? But, you know, yes, Jesus made you the boss. Go and introduce somebody to somebody. Go and, and, and entreat people to, to encourage each other and interact. It's our responsibility to tell the women what's happening in the church. Every time I have women's ministry, I say, hey, you guys, this is what's happening in the bulletin. Go do this. Your husband, guess what? They're going to have a men's dinner. It's my responsibility to tell you because you think that people hear and know what everything's happening in the church, but no, they don't. They don't listen when you do the announcements on Sunday or they don't read the bulletin. So you have to tell them and remind them, hey, we're having a baptism or whatever. It's really important. But also, it is also a responsibility to tell the women what's happening in the world. Do you know how many, how many of you, maybe you don't want to raise your hand, how many of you do not watch the news and do not read about the news? Okay, but there's a lot more women in women's ministry who don't know about what's happening in the world. Do you know that 90,000 people in China are killed every year because they're too old or they're deformed or something's wrong with them, but they kill people? Do you know that 400 million babies have been aborted in China since the 40s? Do you know what transhumanism is? Do you know what critical race theory is? I know these sound like, like oh, we're talking politics, but we're not. Critical, okay, if you heard, how many raise your hand if you know what critical race theory is? Okay, not very many of you, but some of you. Critical race theory is the concept from the f Marxisms and those people, I'm not even gonna tell you their names or anything, that they observed from the Nazis about how to change their communities. I'm really simplifying it, okay? And what it is is that we don't need to have any form of structure. We don't need families that are a certain way. We don't need forms. We don't need established um, religion. We don't need gender. We don't need rules or structure. And so while all the things you're seeing happening in the world right now, there's no gender, there's no family, there's no marriage, there's no patriarchy. Why are men in charge? Women should be in charge. All that comes from people who study these theories and think that's how we're gonna change the world to have world peace, okay? So they have in your schools right now, okay, I'm just gonna say this. I used to be a teacher many years ago. I went to college to be a teacher, took all the classes about how you, psychology and all that stuff and how you teach it, specifically because I was teaching babies and preschools. So you learn psychology and how to re teach them and the practices and theories and all that stuff. Remember the days of, you're awesome, you're great, you can be anything, it doesn't matter who you are, or what you think, you're just be happy you're you. All, that was like a, I can't even tell you what it was called. 
That was like going through preschool and kindergarten, first grade and second grade, and all the schools. And so kids learned that they could be whatever they wanted to be and that there's no rules. And it doesn't matter if you're different because different is good and different is good. But also it's like taking away like morals and values. And so critical race theory is the agent or the philosophy that they're using to put all of these things into our schools to tell kids there's no gender. There doesn't have to be boys and girls together in a relationship. You don't need a mom and a dad in a house. You, you know, all that stuff that I don't have to, do I have to tell you about that stuff? You heard, you're hearing about all that stuff. You know, if you're white, you're privileged. You just don't know it. All that garbage goes against Genesis chapter two, okay? In Genesis, what did God do? He created man and woman. In Genesis, what did God do? He said, man, you're in charge. You're over the woman. The woman's under him. God created marriage, right? God gave us dominion. Man, you're over the, you're over the, you're over the world. You're over, you, made, you name the animals. You tell them, you know, but your animal husband, you, you take care of them. Um, he gave us the ability to talk with him. He gave us, this is who you are. This is, you know, I'm your God. You know, obey me. Do this. And then all that happened in Genesis. Um, you, you know what? Um, anyway, all those things. And the world wants to come against all that is in Genesis chapter 2. But guess what? If people don't know about it, then it's, okay, it's not even important enough that you just know about it. But how can you pray about something? if you don't know about it? How can you pray about your little grandchild in kindergarten who's going to a public school and you don't even know they're being taught these things? You need to pray about these things. You need to encourage moms. Hey, moms, do you know what your kids are learning? I mean, it's our responsibility to tell in the women's ministry to tell women about these things. Now, I'm not saying that every week you go up there and you do your stump speech. I'm just saying that there's things happening in our world that people need to know about. You know, we just passed a marijuana law. They did in New Mexico. Marijuana is going to be all over our state. You know what that's going to do to our kids? That's going to make them dumber. My kids told me, mom, their kids are already smoking marijuana like crazy here. I know, but why are we going to approve of it? You know, that just happened. Um, anyway, so that's our responsibility. The goal of the women's ministry is diverse. It's not to get women to be volleyball scholars. I already said that. It's not to be popular or trendy. You know, it's not. I mean, we can, there's always going to be the greatest, latest book that goes out there. But if it's the greatest, latest book and it's not based on the Bible, then why are we wasting our time? Because we have the best and the greatest book in the Bible. Um, it's not to entertain. The women's ministry is not to entertain women or to promote a specific author or teacher. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this person, she's the greatest, greatest, latest, greatest Bible, whatever. That's not what the women's ministry is for. It's to raise up the name of Jesus and his word. It's great if you have those people in your life that you can look up to. It's great. But that's not the women's ministry's role. It's to raise up the name of Jesus, raise up his word, tell people to, how to get saved, and to support our ministry uh, that's happening in the church. Uh, I put, and I already told you this, to include teachers if you can. Women, if you're not a teacher and you know God hasn't given you the gift of teaching, then you need to pray that God raises up people to teach. Young women, it could be married women, it could be older, it could be grandmas, it could be, pray that God shows you who has that anointing. And it's not just something you let anybody do, but you pray. You talk to your leaders in your church. You talk to your pastor. You say, I'm praying about this person to be a teacher in the church. What do you think? And then you let them tell you what they think. <laughs> um, I already told you how to model in the women's ministry. Open your Bible. Open in prayer. Open your Bible. Read the Bible. Be honest. Be open. Share the gospel. Challenge and exhort women. Here, I'm going to tell you again to love God, to love their husbands, to love their children, and to love the church. That is all. That is all. That is what the ministry's, women's ministry is supposed to do. A few other books that I would say, did I tell you, ref I did Reflecting God. I did Calm My Anxious Heart. Oh, um, and even, you know, in the summer, sometimes we go through books that are like more biographical. We've gone through um, Elizabeth Elliot's books. They're really good. 
We've gone through, I think we've read Sharon's book too, My Husband and My Maker. Um, we've read a lot of, we've read, last time we read, um, what's the one with Wormwood? The Screw Tape Letters. We read the Screw Tape Letters the last time. I was like, whoa, that was great timing. That was like two summers ago. But there's lots of amazing, great books that you could share and do. And even, you know, you could even do like a book club, like in, you know, whatever. You know, it could be, hey, ladies are meeting Tuesday, Thursday morning at 10. You want to go? We're going to do a book club. And that's, it's, it's less formal. And basically, you just need to be able to lead a, a group and talk to women. And women just love to get together for coffee. So it's a really good way to do that with women. I had a few questions here. I also wanted to tell you something else. Um, Alexander, you want to come up here real quick and talk, talk about the moms group. Um, we know that, that, you know, there's lots of different groups you could have in the church, but I think one of the biggest, one of the groups that's really good to encourage young moms is to have a moms group. Alexander, you want to share a little bit about that? Here. Yeah. Share with me. Uh, this is my daughter as well. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll just share a little bit about what we do. Uh, for Moms Group, we just have a group that meets here at the church um, on Thursday mornings, which, you know, and we meet at from 9.30 to 11.30. And our heart really is just to provide a place. We meet in the nursery here at church. And our heart is just to provide a place where women can meet without needing child care. Without, I know even when I had little kids, um, I didn't want to leave them with people, <laughs> with strangers. But, um, you know, what we've found is by providing a place that, where moms can come with their kids, or even some come without their kids, um, where they don't need to worry about childcare, worry about having to make arrangements where they can just come and be as they are. And we plan different activities for the kids. So we'll do like a, a lesson for the adults. So what we usually do is we'll bring snacks. Um, snacks are key. <laughs> and we'll do a Bible study. We'll, what we've been doing lately is we've been doing, we've been picking, um, we've been doing a character study. So we've been picking, so last week we did David and Saul when they were in the cave. And so we did a, a devotion for the moms, and we kind of talked about what that means for us spiritually. And we, you know, we usually try to feed the kids while we talk <laughs> or let them entertain them somehow. And then we'll move on and do an activity. And we'll teach them the same thing as we're learning. And we'll teach, do an activity with them. And so we're both learning together. And we're both we're being able to just equip them with the same things, where it's not just moms meeting, but we're showing other moms how to teach their children about God and how um, just providing them opportunities to speak with them and, and to incorporate that. And what we've found is that it's really created because of the fact that we have our kids uh, with us. You can't like put on a show and like pretend like your life is together if your children are with you. <laughs> you can't. It's like showing someone that room in your house that's like, you know, that room that all the stuff ends up in. The it's like when you bring your children with you, it's like you're showing them that room. Okay. <laughs> like, but what we found is that it's been, it's created such um, vulnerable relationships and such intimate relationships because we're able to be in a place where we're vulnerable with one another and we're able to actually speak into each other's lives and be real with one another and just do life together. And it's something that every week we're like, if there's a new mom, we're like, don't worry, it's fine. Like, this is our real life. Okay, let's not, we all understand that this is our real life every time. So like, if your kid bites mine, like, <laughs> I get it. My kid probably bit your kid last week. But <laughs> literally, that's happened. But <laughs> But it's been really a sweet opportunity to just be able to create relationships that are vulnerable and that are real. And I think basically just whatever season of life you're in, being able to, if like, I don't know, there's a lot of women who, who don't have a place or don't, I've, I grew up in this church, okay, and there's been seasons in my life where I stand here in the halls and I just feel like there's nowhere I belong. And so if I feel like that, knowing that there are lots of other people who feel like that as well. And so when you feel like that, you have a choice. You can just feel lonely, oh, poor me, I'm all alone, and there's no place for me. Or you can make a place. Make a place where, where you belong and invite other people along to be able to come and fill that space with you. And that's what it's been for us, and it's been really sweet. And really, um, God's really blessed it and really um, just blessed the relationships that we're able to form. And so even, guys... I know I'm a young mom, and I, and I can't, I, when I, we started this ministry, I couldn't do other things. But if you're like an older mom, and you like just have one, just do that. I would love to be poured into by older women. <laughs> like come every week. And you know, sometimes the women in our church will do like Betty Martinez invited us to go to her house and make cultured vegetables. 
But like that was such a blessing to me to be able to go and learn from an older woman who was, you know, knows more than I do. And so I don't know. I know that I'm younger than probably most of you, but I mean, sorry. She's the youngest. I'm. This is a place where I feel young. Usually I feel old. But, uh, <laughs> but, but. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. But but what an opportunity that you have to be able to do that. And I I think that there's a lot young moms who are my age who, who are trying to figure out motherhood and trying to navigate this, we're hungry for wisdom. We want help because we are, we're beginning to realize that we don't know everything, <laughs> that we really know nothing. And so I think it's just such a field that's so ripe and so um, there's so much to be done and there's so many opportunities. So that's just what we do and that's hopefully something that maybe you guys could do. That you and could an seek older to pour mom into. could start it. Yeah. And then all, and then they will come. The younger, the younger moms will come. Yeah. Feed them. Yeah. Feed them and their kids. Thank you. So I want to go through some of these questions that we have here. I just want to tell you this. Just let me just tell you from my own heart. Okay. So if I grew up, um, four brothers, two sisters, my sister, Mary got married at 18 and I was six. So I didn't really grow up with her you know, she left. Um, but my other sister, Emmy, um, she, I didn't really, I don't really feel like I grew up in a girl's house. Like, you know, the girls, like she did the makeup and she did this and she did that. And she taught me how to do those things. I didn't grow up like that. So I grew up, um, like not really being friends with girls, like really like friends. Like I had one good friend and we were friends, but like, I wasn't really the girl, girl, girl. Does that make sense? Okay. So women's ministry, like when I first got married to my husband, he said, this is what we're gonna, I'm going to do. Well, when I first met him, like, you know, like I only knew him like three months and then maybe two months. And then we got married in the third month. Anyway, that's a long story. So he told me he was going to be a pastor and I got all that, but I didn't know what it was. And anyway, we came here. I never was the person who said, I want to do women's ministry. He said, you will do a women's ministry. <laughs> so like, I would be the girl who wouldn't go to women's ministry. I would be the girl who didn't want to go to women's ministry. I would be the girl that didn't want to be with women. I would be the girl who didn't want to talk with women because that's, I'm not that girl. But when my husband said, you will do women's ministry, I didn't fight him or anything. I was just like, okay, how do I do it? And you know what? God showed me what I need to do. Now, um, being around women and just encouraging them and sharing with them and reading your Bible and doing all the things that we talked about before, you know, you don't have to be the person that you think you need to be to do the things you need to do. God just needs to inspire you, and the Holy Spirit needs to teach you. So if you feel inadequate, hello, welcome to the club. Because God is the one, and the Holy Spirit is the one who makes you be what you need to be. So, you know, you have that thing in your heart that God's telling you, I need to do something, then let God tell you what you need to do with it. And if that's in the women's ministry, that's great. But you know what? When ministering to women on a one-on-one -on -one basis is the heart, really, of being in the women's ministry. And that doesn't just happen at events. That happens in church when you see the women who come into church. And so one of the questions was, does women's ministry, does women's Bible study count as going to church? Um, and so I would say, I would say no, because going to church is being under the headship of your pastor. So anybody who serves here at our church, we want them to go to church, to be in the sanctuary and go to church. Going to church is for you to grow, to hear from your pastor, to hear his heart, to hear the teaching, to hear the direction of your church, to hear what the church is, you know, the whole everything. So if you're serving in the women's ministry, you need to go to church first. You can serve in the women's ministry, but you also need to go to church every Sunday. Maybe you don't go every Wednesday, but at least you have to be in service once a week because that's how you hear the heart of your pastor and you hear the heart of the church and you hear what everybody's studying, what everybody's learning. So it absolutely is necessary that you go 
to the main service. Because women's ministry, I'm, I'm not going to say it doesn't count, but it's not the same thing as hearing from your pastor. Because if you want to be a servant and you want to be a leader in your church, then that's, that's he's, you know, going to the main service is, is where you're going to learn, you know, about the scriptures from your pastor. So that is very important. Therefore, you know, people always used to say, oh, you know, some, somebody once said, sorry, not people always, somebody once said, oh, the women's ministry is so clicky. <laughs> and that's said of some people sometimes. And you know what? I would say, all my friends are the ones who serve with me. Guess what? Sometimes that means we serve in the women's ministry together. But how do we become friends? because we went to the women's ministry. We didn't go, hey, you, 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 you come be the women's ministry. No, they were the ones who showed up. They were the ones who came to the women's ministry. They're the ones who wanted to be a part of it. They're the ones who wanted to help. They're the ones who wanted to pray. They're, that's how they became my friends because they came to be wherever I was and we became friends. So um, it's really, I mean, everybody should want to be a part of the women's ministry because it's, so much, it's, it's so many things we do that is fun. It's great. We get to be creative. We get to serve food. We get to hang out. We could go on retreats. We get to do lots of stuff. I'm telling you, when, when, when push comes to shove, the food at the women's ministry psh, kills the guy's food. I mean, we feel sorry for them sometimes when we make them food because we just do really fun stuff. Um, so that was one question. Here's another question. What all is entailed in the women's ministry? Are there several ministries under the umbrella of the women's ministry? Um, there can be um, uh, at some at some point in the in um, in our um, here at the church, we had a we had a fitness ministry, a fitness and lifestyle ministry where um, they did exercising and they talked about healthy food that, you know, the, some woman said they wanted to be a part of that. And so, so they said, okay. So then the assistant pastor would say, okay, go talk to Marguerite because she's overseeing the women's ministry. Let's see how that lines up. It's always good to have order in your church. So it's not good to have somebody doing this over here and somebody over there and somebody, it's good to have unity so that we're all together. So I would suggest if you wanted to do a certain ministry, you went to the, the, the pastor or the, assist, or the pastor or you went to the woman in charge of the women's ministry and said, hey, I'm really praying about doing this. What do you think? And then she would probably hopefully say, you know, well, let's pray about that. There are some people who don't want to pray about it. They just want to do it. That's, I'm sorry, that's not the way things get done. We pray over everything, right? So we say, okay, let's pray about it. And then you go and you talk to the, the, the leaders and you say, well, what do you think? We think about doing this, blah, blah, blah. And then they pray about it and then they talk to you. And then you, you say, oh yeah, we have a peace about that. Let's do it. Okay, but that's the way church runs. It's got to have order. It can't just be everybody doing everything and saying, I want to do this and I want to do that. Otherwise, there'd be like 10 million ministries going on, but no unity. So we have to have unity. Um, and there are things that are under the women's ministry, so that would be one of them. Another one is like the moms group. Um, I would love it if we had other ministries. So if any of the girls are out here and they want to, they're praying about starting a ministry, come talk to me. <laughs> but in your churches, those things could, you could have those things, you know, a hospitality ministry. You know, um, we, we have a hospitality ministry and it's not, you know, it's, you know, it's just the people who do the work, <laughs> but it's not like the hospitality ministry. But we have um, a bereavement ministry, and it's mainly women, but they're not under the women's ministry. They're under, um, like, the pastoral leadership. But they minister. It could be under the women's ministry. They minister to people who um, have funerals, and they get their food, and they help them. They serve it and stuff like that. So there could be other things under. Creating events to best encourage the women, ideas or tips. you got to know your women. you got to know what they like. Let's say one time we had some women who were very crafty and they wanted to do like a workshop-based event. So what we did, we, we called it, what did we call it? Peggy, do you remember? Uh, we called it, I can't remember what we called it. But we did all kinds of things. So like somebody was teaching them how to be organized in a classroom. Somebody was teaching them how to garden. Somebody was teaching them how to sew. And so we came together for one Saturday and we broke up. We came in a general session and then we all went into the groups and they all did different things. Somebody did cake decorating or something like that. So you find out what your women like and then you just say, okay, we're going to do this on this day. And you tell the women. The one thing I do know about women's ministry, you have to 
tell the women a lot. That means you get a table in your hallway and you say, hey ladies, we're having a, you set it up really cute, and you say, we're having a tea, and you start selling your tickets three weeks before, four weeks before. You start talking about it. You, you know, doing all your signs in your literature, and you got to tell the ladies what's happening, because otherwise, they, that way they can plan. Um, so there are other things that, that we would do. I'm, I've never done a fashion show, but some people do, you know, stuff like that. You could do a, a one time, um, Peggy and Jim did a tea for a father's tea. So they decorated the chapel all full of like camping and stuff and they had tents and fake river and everything. And then they, the girl, little girls took their dads and they like, I don't know what the food they ate, I can't remember, but that was something that was cute. So you gotta know your women, what they like and what they do. I mean, I don't know, you could think of any other things that, um, that they'd be interested. No know what they like. And then, you know, with your leadership, say, hey, what do you think about this? And then start planning. And like I said, keep, talk about it, tell everybody. How can we encourage moms of little ones to find balance in homemaking and being a wife? You know what? Sometimes as older women, we just have to tell them, hey, maybe you're doing too much. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the other one time, one of my daughters came to me and said, blah, 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 blah. I said, you know what? Maybe you're doing too much. Maybe you're here and you're there and you need to slow down. You know, you can't be everything to everybody. You got it. What are the main things you take? What, is, what, is, what do we talk about in the very beginning? Love God. Love your husband. Love your children. Okay, you got to do all those things before you can do the other things. You have to. And sometimes we just have to say, hey, you're crazy. You're doing too much. And if, you know, and I'm not saying you go to people and you tell them, but when people are coming to you and saying, my life is a mess, I don't know what's wrong with it. You gotta be honest. You gotta take them to the word and say, okay, tell me the things that God's told you to do. Are you doing those things? Okay, now you're doing all these other things. Do those things stop you or encourage you to keep doing the first things that you're supposed to do with anything in your life? I'm praying about doing this new job. Okay, well, this new job, provide for your family, but will also allow you to still go to church? Little, those are important things. Okay, so I don't know if that helped you. Keeping the main thing the main thing. Sometimes women's ministry seems to take a life of its own, kind of it's its own church inside the church. How can this be wisely warded off? I think I talked a little bit about that. Did I answer that question? Kind of like, you know, we're under the whole church. You know, some churches have a thriving women's ministry. Some churches, women's ministry is bigger than every other ministry. But you know what? Sometimes that's just because there's more women, you know. But like I said, remember, the sign outside the door says Calvary Chapel, Rio Grande Valley. It doesn't say Calvary Chapel, Rio Grande Valley Women's Ministry. So always know what to keep the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing is to teach the word of God, to encourage the women, to exhort them, to love them, and to uh, share the gospel with them. Um, I just wanted to share one more thing because we're almost done with our time. I have been praying, I don't know about you, but have any of you guys been overwhelmed with what am I gonna do about what's going on in our world? <laughs> I've been having that feeling, I don't know, I've been telling the women in our women's Bible study that I know that God's been wanting me to do something else, another something else. Uh, but I didn't know what it was. And then, uh, so what I started doing was uh, I, I joined, uh, I started going to the Republican women's meetings and I started doing some things in the county level and Ray and I are going to our ward meetings because um, uh, we want to have more of a voice and know what's going on. But that I was like, you know what, that's still not, that's not what, you know, I, we're going to do this stuff, but we're, we're, that's not going to be something I focus on. And then um, I became aware of this organization called um, Concerned Women for America. And I don't know if anybody know about them, Concerned Women of America. Okay, so in the 80s, Beverly LaHaye, the guy, you know, Tim LaHaye, the one who wrote all those books, uh, those uh, prophetic books, or what do you call those books? Left Behind Books, thank you. Well, anyway, so he... Um, his wife, Beverly LaHaye, started this organization in the 80s. And basically what I read to you, what I talked to you about, um, um, all the things that are wrong with the world are in Genesis chapter 2. Well, Concerned Women of America is an organization that is biblically based. All of their goals and their, their, goals and their concerns have to do with the Bible. And I love that because um, I 
want, I agree with it. And basically, in the state of New Mexico, there's only two chapters. There's one in Rio Rancho. It's a prayer action chap chapter. So what they do is they're praying about all these issues. And then if there's issues that we know about, then we like rally people and tell them about it. Very simple. So I became uh, the second one in New Mexico, but there's only two. And so we're going to start meeting May, um, actually Monday, uh, is going to be our first meeting. And so our, we're going to be meeting and just to encourage women, to exhort them, and to, um, to pray. And so, um, and the reason why I'm telling you about this is because um, as women, you know, that's really in the women's ministry and even just as women, we need to be praying about issues because there's so many things going on. There's so many things that you can't even keep up with what's going on in the world and how we know it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. We're in the end times. The Bible says in the end times there will be perilous times. And then the list of all of the bad things that people would be doing that they're doing now, right? Lovers of themselves. They'll, I mean, what, where is that? That's in, um, is that in, that's in 2 Timothy, right? I, I'm pretty sure it is. I think that's the teaching that, that Ray's going to be talking about. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. It's uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Those are the days we live in. And so I am going to, and in this organization, if you're interested at all, um, they have, um, I have some pamphlets about it. But, you know, I am encouraging you and exhorting you um, if you, uh, where you live, if you feel called to do something like that, my heart is to encourage Christian women. So not just the women that go to our church, and it has, it really is not going to be, it's not part of the women's ministry, but it's a way that I can encourage women outside of, um, of the church and to pray for them. Because you have women in your ministry that are the ladies that are standing on the corners for Karenet and Right to Life, and they're standing there and they're getting mocked and ridiculed. You have Christian women in your communities that are serving on their blend, on their on their blend, on their chambers or in their government, and they are being kicked down because they're Christians. And the world is telling them to be quiet and stop being a Christian. And you need to encourage them, and you need to love them, and you need to lift them up. And so I pray that that's what you're doing in your ministry. But recognizing that the people that are walking into your church are out in the community and they're doing the heavy lifting. And my heart in this ministry is to encourage them and to like, we're going to have this amazing little like setup, like to have them come in and feed them and, and we're going to um, encourage them and then we're going to pray for them. And, and, and you know what, maybe five people come and we just we pray for all these issues. But you know all the things that are happening in your church that are happening in your community with schools and teachers and policies. And so um, really um, praying for those things as the women's ministry. And I didn't even talk about that. In the women's ministry, there's prayer people, people who pray. Now, in the very beginning for women's ministry, I used to do the prayer group all the time. I was always the one praying and me and a couple of people and we would pray. But when I started working here, I told my husband, There's, I have to stop doing some things. I can't do everything. You know, I have my kids, and I have my, I work, and I have all these things. I have to, and so I said, you know what? I'm, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give over the prayer ministry to these other ladies. And I know sometimes I feel guilty because I feel like, oh, yeah, but you don't know, go to women's prayer. You know what I'm saying? I do. I feel guilty and I feel bad. And sometimes I feel like, oh, nobody thinks I'm a, you know, because, you know, we're women. We think that way. But I know that that's a ministry that God said, okay, let them do that. And there's a group of women that come and they pray every week. And they're faithfully praying and they pray for the needs of the church that we have on our prayer request forms that we have in our boxes around the building. And I know those women are always praying for that. And I know that it's okay. I don't have to do everything in the women's ministry. I just have to do what God tells me to do. And you need to pray. If you don't have an established ministry, that that's where you start, praying. 
and you pray. And every time you do anything in women's ministry, you're praying because it's through prayer that God changes lives. He changes our hearts. He changes situations. He heals. He does all these things. It's very important that you get together and you pray, but not only that you have a group of women who are coming together and they're praying. Um, anytime, you know, you're in the women's ministry, anytime the church is doing like a prayer thing or something, you should be involved in it. Hey, ladies, this Tuesday we're going to meet, or Sunday after church, you know, we're going to pray. And tell your women about those things. Another thing you could be doing in women's ministry is getting their phone numbers and their emails and talking to them when you're not meeting. Hey, ladies, we're going to do something. Or, hey, ladies, how are you doing? Having your women be leaders in the women's ministry and encouraging the other women, whether, like I said, through texting or praying or whatever, and just being available to minister and to, and to, and to counsel with women. Does anybody have any other questions? No. Okay. I hope, I hope you were encouraged. If you have any other questions, I want to be around this whole time. I'd love to have you talk to me um, about any of these things. If anybody's interested in Concerned Women in America, I have these flyers and these papers here. Um, just let, let me, if anybody would like to... Uh, email me or ask me questions, I would love to give you my email. It's marguerite.hotamil at gmail.com. Anytime you have a question, you need help, you want to know something, it's women's ministry. Hey, um, I need to make a ticket for the women's ministry. I can't do it. Help. I'll give you one. I'll help you. Uh, I'll help you get, do whatever you need to do. I would love to be available for that tomorrow, next week, next month. You know, if you ever need like but somebody to teach at something or, you know, I can, I would love to be a teacher at your church or, or recommend one of our other teachers to teach for you. I mean, um, I know a girl who does worship. I don't know if she goes to other places and do it, but I know that you all have people like that, that if we needed, maybe you would help, you would help us do it. So, you know, we should, you know, model that same behavior and help each other and text each other or, or email each other and say, hey, I have this problem. What do you think? And, you know, that's why you, you know, we need to have that relationship with each other because we see each other now, but, you know, we go back home and we're like, oh, I don't have this problem. I don't know what to do. We're, we know we need to encourage each other, you know, and it's really hard because we get too busy. But um, if you ever need any help or need any um, advice or need any encouragement, please email me. Call the church. Ask for me. Everybody knows me. Just They'll put you at my voicemail. I would love to help um, you in any way. Um, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We know that you're good and you're able. We pray, Lord God, that you would just help us, Lord, to serve in the communities that we're in, to love our you, our God, to love our husbands, to love our children and family, and to love the people that you put us with in our churches. So fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. If there's anyone in here that doesn't know you, Lord, I pray they would repent and come to know you, and they would receive you as their Savior. I pray that we would just love the women that you've given us, Lord, and that you would give us the spirit and the power to do all the things we need to do. Lord, we wear many hats, but I pray that you would keep us wearing the ones you want us to wear and help us to take off the hats we don't need to be wearing. We just thank you, Lord. I pray for these women now in Jesus' name. Amen.